Hey guys, it's Alex over at Laser Everything, and in this next section of videos for the ultimate guide to laser processing, we're going to be covering how to figure out what kind of laser source you're working with. And to keep things simple, we're going to do separate videos for fiber, UV, CO2 RF tubes, CO2 glass tubes, and diode laser modules. This means that we're going to be opening up our lasers in most cases to try to ascertain this information, and I just want to remind you before we get started. I'm not an electrical expert and if you're uncomfortable or unsure about what you're doing when opening up your machines, make sure to consult an electrical expert before doing so so that you can stay safe as there are inherent risks to digging around inside of your machines where you don't belong. Furthermore, this is very likely going to void your warranty in most cases, so just be prepared for that eventuality if you decide to go digging for this information on your own. Before going nuclear, you can always try to reach out to your manufacturer to see if you can get a straight answer about the type of source and its specs before moving on with this section of tutorials. Oftentimes, they'll happily share that information with you, and if you can get it with them and you trust your manufacturer is being accurate with that information, then that is a preferable way to go about this. That said, let's cut the sticker and dive into fiber laser sources. Most fiber laser sources are contained inside a separate unit from the scan head and laser path in a box like this, and there are a few different configurations that determine what you're going to have to do to them to get inside. Some all-in-one units you may have to take off a rear panel or a base or the bottom, but in split style lasers, which are the most common, generally there are six machine screws on the front and six machine screws on the back that can be removed to move the front face plate and rear back plate away from the machine, which allows you to pull up the side panels and see the inner workings. This does vary quite a bit from manufacturer to manufacturer, but this is the most common style. Some things I'll mention before you get started, before opening your machine, absolutely make sure that your machine is powered off and that it is unplugged from the wall. I've caught a shock multiple times from the insides of these machines and it is not fun and I promise it's not something you want to experience. After the machines had a little while to sit, it should be discharged and safe to work on, but I do want to call attention to one component in particular. This component right here in the bottom left corner is called the EMI filter. It's the electromagnetic interference filter and it basically cleans the power coming into the machine so the machine has nice waveforms to work with while distributing power to the various components and I've gotten shocks from these long after the machine has been unplugged and discharged so I just want to point it out as a danger point inside your machine when you think you've done everything else beware of this component pictured here it does have little plastic insulators over the contact ports and that's great but I've definitely had machines where that isn't the case I've not tested to see if you can still get shocked through these insulators and the majority of times I've been shocked by a fiber laser, it's been by this component, so please exercise extra care when working around this device. It should be pretty clear right away where your laser source is. It's the largest box inside the machine, and it's going to have a fiber optic cable coming out of it. Quick tip while we're sitting here looking at it, if your fiber optic cable is not as it is pictured here in one large loop and instead is coiled up into a tight coil, you're going to want to cut that zip tie, keeping the fiber optic cable cable coiled so you can relax the turns in the line. Fiber laser fiber optic cables are not meant to be tightly coiled and they can actually wear down much faster when they are. So you'll want to do your best to give this as much breathing room as possible. The way the fiber optic cable is situated in my Mactron here is pretty much the best case scenario so you can use this as a guide. But what we're interested in is what kind of fiber laser source we're using. I've seen labels from all manufacturers and they are all pretty clear and easy to find. They're generally a silver or bright white sticker and they list the manufacturer and the source model number. Pictured here is the source for my 80 watt JPT and we can see it's model YDFLP-80 
dash m7 dash m we can also see a serial number and a sticker that says that it passed quality control great that's it now we know what kind of fiber laser source we're looking at let's take a look at a couple other examples this is the fiber laser source from my very first fiber laser it is a 30 watt jpt i've had this laser for a really long time but as you can see despite it being older it has the same exact layout we've got a quality control sticker a serial number and the model this one's the ydflp 30 lp one plus s the lp sources are excellent they're very inexpensive these days again you can see in this kind of storage situation i do not have the fiber optic cable tightly bound it's very loose for storage while we're waiting for its next project where we're going to put it into our test bench but for now we just have it kind of loosely looped on top of the machine and this is how you want to store these with that done let's take a look at a fiber laser source from one more manufacturer this source is a source that was sent to me from gz tech uh, quite a while ago now you can see even though it's a different brand of source it has a very similar configuration so here we're looking at model yfpn dash ad dash gm We've got a serial number and a manufacturer date, which is great. And this one even lists the power rating. So it's a 14 amp, 24 volt DC power supply that's required to run this source. You may have noticed that all of these sources have stickers in different spots. So you may need to look around. It's not quite as bad as some RF tubes where the sticker is on the bottom. So you shouldn't have to unmount these to solve your fiber laser mystery. I've never seen any stickers on the bottom side that's actually mounted to the base plate inside the machine but if you can't find a sticker before you go unmounting your source I'd probably try once again to contact your manufacturer because remounting them can be a bit of a pain in the butt while you have it open it may be a good idea to spray some compressed air if you have uh, canned compressed air that's fine or if you have a blower of some sort like the data vac that we like to use at laser everything just to get all the dust out of here while we've got it open for now though you've got your source information so what do you do with it? Well, of course, you can always Google search things, but I'd also recommend heading over to makearmy.io where you can see our laser source database. And if we go ahead and give that a click, you'll see a ton of different laser sources listed here with more information about them. Let's see if we can find that 30 watt JPT LP source. Here's the YDF LP E30 LPS. And if we go ahead and give that a click, we can see a ton of information about our laser, including the millijoule max we can see our laser's wattage the wavelength if it has a locked pulse width we can see that value or unlocked a range here we can also see the operating voltage so what kind of power supply it requires and for some reason it's not filled out for this entry i'll have to fix that but you can also find the pulse repetition rate or your frequency range for your laser in these tables as well so this is a great resource and again you can find this at makearmy.io under the laser source database to get all the information you need to set your laser up properly inside of Lightburn once we get to that point. So this is something you're going to want to bookmark because we're going to come back to this page over and over again. If for some reason you can't find your source in this database or your source is missing information, feel free to reach out to me and let me know. We can get it added if you do have the data for it. If you don't, I'm sure we can find somebody that has a similar source in the community. Hit us up over at Discord or at masters.lasereverything.net if you want to support the channel and we can help you discover the accurate details about your laser source so you can get your machine set up properly that's all for now there's a lot more to discuss as far as what's going on inside of this machine but we're going to save that for a little later on in the guide when we do our basic fiber laser anatomy video so if you're curious about what everything inside of this case does hang on that video should be coming at you in at most a month or two when we get a little bit further along in the course and we've got our machine operational so we'll swing back around to that later for now though guys i think that's it that should be everything you need in order to get the basic information about your laser source that we're going to need when we move on to installing and configuring Lightburn. I hope you found that helpful. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.